Welcome to Fitz Dog Radio. It's a beautiful summer day here in Venice Beach, California. The wind is blowing through the bamboo and the palm. Cheering up. A little bummed out last night. The uh, goddamn Edmonton Oilers lost in Game 7 to the Florida Panthers. And it was an amazing... If you didn't watch the series, you missed one of the greatest Stanley Cup series of all time. Uh, three, they were down three games, nothing. And then they came back, forced a game seven. Everybody wanted to see Connor McDavid win a Stanley Cup, hoist a trophy. He did win the MVP. They played unbelievable. I have to say Florida played better. They were physical as shit. They pulled out what brought them to the Stanley Cup, which is just uh, great forechecking, amazing defense, very physical and in the end, they uh, have to say they, they they earned it. They earned that game seven. So um, that was fun. Now, watching hockey, I, I there's not a better sport to watch. You are watching 60 minutes in two hours. As opposed to football, you're watching, I don't know how long of the quarters, three and a half hours for a game. All action. So great. Anyway, so it's beautiful here in Venice. We I went down to the beach yesterday, uh, rode my bike. My son was down there with all his buddies playing paddle tennis, slapped it around a little bit, dove in the ocean, rode some waves, walked around, got some sun. It was like 80 degrees. It was beautiful. Biked home, took an outdoor shower, jumped in the hot tub, grilled it up last night. It was just a California day. And I had this thing happen. Uh, I was walking down the street. I live along all these walk streets, and it's just I just walk every day. I know all my neighbors, and I'm walking along, and this woman comes out of uh, kind of like a there's a lot of bushes and then a door, and she comes out of it, and she bumps into me, and I say excuse me, and she goes oh excuse me, and she's got a little chihuahua in her hands, and then I walk about three or four steps ahead of her, and she goes. You're so cute. And I went, thank you. And I turned around. I go, thank you. And then I go, oh, you were talking to the dog. Okay. Yeah, he is cute. He is very cute. She goes, no, you're cute too. I go, no, it was the dog. It was the dog. I don't, I had on my Adidas track suit. I had a little Irish cap on. I did think I looked cute, but I don't get you're cute that much on the street these days. And that's fine. I kind of own it how I look now. Like I was on the beach yesterday in a bathing suit and I was walking up and down the sand just just enjoying. And uh, I never once thought, oh, what if somebody's looking at my body? I don't care. It's pasty white. I get skinny legs, very little hair. Um, I don't know. What the fuck do I care? It's nice to get to that age. So anyway, uh, what else? We had the guy come over. We had a dent in the Subaru. And we called this guy, and he shows up, and his license plate says, Mr. Dent. And he comes out, and he's got a suction cup. And he sucks the dent out, but it's still dented. And then he goes, opens up the hood, goes through the hood with this, like, tool that pokes out the holes even more, but it makes little tiny dents, like little pock marks all over the dent to push it out. And then he takes a, a rubber mallet with another, like it looks like a stud, and he's tapping it in with a like a peg, like a rubber peg. It took him like 35 minutes. And when he was done, the, the dent was completely gone. I paid him 200 bucks, cash, Done. So if anybody in L.A. has a dent and they want to get it out, Mr. Dent, uh, DM me or write it to fitsdogradio at gmail.com and I will send you this dude's info. Uh, so I just got back yesterday from, I did some dates. I was in Pittsburgh. I did the KDVE Festival and uh, those guys just treated us great. Randy and the boys at the station, Harlan Williams, Sarah Sarah, uh, Sarah, Sarah, Tiana. God damn it. That was a brain fart. And Chris Porter, we were all down there. Had a blast, ate some good food, walked around. Um, 
and then I hooked up with the Burt Kreischer tour. They were in Pittsburgh, and then I did Doug Loves Movies, which was fun uh, as part of the part of the uh, festival. And then I went to Burt's tour, and he had a. The, the, I saw his show, the Pittsburgh Steelers came out and came on stage and there was a huge party backstage and everybody was there. And then I got on that bus that night and we drove, you know, stayed up till three or four in the morning and then on the bus and then got in the bunk, woke up at like 10 a.m. the next day in Buffalo. It's raining and they've got some golf carts for us and they drive us to Six Flags, which is about a half a mile from where we're parked on the bus, where the show is going to be. So we go to Six Flags. It's fucking empty. It's a ghost town. And we've got these this concierge VIP thing where they're just bringing us to the front of every... Just walking past kids, bald kids from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Sorry, kid. No, it, it's Bert Kreischer. Yeah, he's the machine. You get it. You get it. And we went on like six or seven roller coaster rides and just had a blast. It was a... Uh, great bunch of people um with i i me and whitney uh coming spent a lot of time together on the rides um jay okerson and uh dan soda are so funny just riffing with each other all the time bert his wife leanne uh pete just a just a bunch of great dudes and uh and chicks chicks and dudes man and we had a blast. And then, and then you go back to where the tour bus is parked. And they've got everything. They've got cornhole. They've got uh, a massage room. They've got workout station. They've got a pen full of puppies from a local rescue that we could play with. There was amazing food. There was... Uh, basketball hoops and football tosses and it was just so much fun we had a bl- it's like being at camp it was like summer camp with like the funniest people that you've ever met and there was like a real feeling of love about it because Bert just exudes joy and acceptance and Tony Hinchcliffe was funny as shit and we we're just we we're just having a blast uh, Troy Conrad the photographer was there and then we did the show that night. It was a big outdoor show. And everybody killed. And then I just got back yesterday. But uh, what a blast. That uh, fully loaded tour. If you can get to a show, do it. There's so much fun and the lineups are insane. Um, if you like the show, if you like this show, uh, make sure you rate it. Please leave a comment over on uh, YouTube or on Google Podcasts. Help push the show along. I'll be coming up. I'll be doing Joe Rogan's podcast August 13th. Then my special comes out. I believe it's now August 12th is the release date. There's going to be a live uh, a, a YouTube live, I think. I'll announce it leading up to the special and uh, I think during the special. I'm also coming to the Denver Comedy Works August 29th through the 31st. Austin at the Mothership September 6th through the 8th. Coming to Alaska, Fairbanks, September 25th through the 28th, San Francisco Punchline. After that, go to FitzDog.com, get some tickets, and uh, let's just get to it, because my guest, I think we had a good long one on this one. It was uh, a guy that's been on the show many times. He's one of my dear friends. He... um, you know him from Anchorman and Talladega Nights and a million other projects. He's just the best. He and I, uh, we learn transcendental meditation together. We do a lot of stand-up together. Uh, he is also represented by Midcoast Media for social media and podcasts, and they're great. Um, so here he is. Please enjoy my chat with Mr. Dave Keckner. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Fitz Dog Radio. I got a fucking man. I got a man here today. A wow. guy who, you know, he grew up in the Midwest, uh, played sports. Marginally. 
father was a farmer? <laughs> no, he's a manufacturer of farm implements. You're getting close. If you could not correct me on my podcast, <laughs> I appreciate that. I have a certain level of respect in the industry, and you come in here with if your you hat. Do your research you and get it correct. <laughs> I appreciate it. My, my 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 father manufactured livestock trailers for turkeys. Oh. Turkey coops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because if I'd say turkey coop, people are like, oh, you put it in your backyard? No, yeah. condescending F U C K. <laughs> you put them on a 40 foot trailer and you take them from the grow yeah. out barns right. to the kill sheds, all right? The kill sheds. Yes. The, Did you spend time in the kill sheds? No, no. They, they were centrally located in different states. Yeah. But they would be the ones that bought the turkey coops to take the birds from the grow out barns yeah. all over the country to their localized uh, butchery. Kill what, force, yeah. Was this all corporate by the, but when you were a yeah. kid? Well, yeah. well the, yeah, the turkeys were, yes, because you'd have a Ralston, Perina, and Cargill are the buyers. So yeah. they'd buy the birds from the local farmers. Right. And the farmers would have like five or six grow-out barns. So they'd be sending, you know, I don't know, thousands of birds to their death weekly, you'd think. Wow. Yeah. So we could all sup on them. But my father was merely the transference to death. Like yeah, he was way. the Goebbels. He yes. wasn't the Himmler. <laughs> you got to do your research, folks. Those are good jokes. Oh. <laughs> so how are you, man? I'm good. You're a fucking road dog. Every time I look at your Instagram, yeah. you are... Five kids, man. Five kids. And all, you know, the twins are going to college. Well, Audrey's going to go to college, and Sergeant's going to do a gap year. Okay. So Audrey's going to go to Colorado, and then Sergeant's going to go to... He's going to do language immersion in... Costa Rica, Guatemala, and Peru. And Peru. Oh, nice. That's a five-month program, which is great because it's cheaper than college. And then I'm going to encourage him, to like, do, do, do another five months, son. Go to Italy. Well, my son just did five months in Central America. Really? Well, what do he, you do? Well, both my kids did uh, Spanish immersion growing up, so oh. they're both fluent in Spanish. Okay, growing up. Growing up. Okay. And then so they uh, went off went off, and uh, he went to college, and then he went to with a buddy. Just He took, like, what they call... Uh, chicken buses because everybody's got a chicken in their lap uh-huh. just going from town to town yeah. and uh he just had adventures and this was not part of a college program no this was just freestyle wow yeah okay yeah. cool it was great and, i might uh, have to have him talk to sergeant oh absolutely yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. peer-to-peer peer-to-peer <laughs> i mean because uh, he'll tell him things he didn't tell me about the trip uh, that, it's true yeah. i do know this him and his buddy met two women when uh, they they were in Guatemala and they met two women who said, "Hey, we live. In, you guys are going to Mexico?" And they're like, "We're Mexican. We get come to our town and stay with us." And they're like, wow. "They're twins. Wow." And they're like twenty nine, and my oh, my, no. my son's twenty two. Wow. So they go or twenty three. So they go off. They go to this Mexican. It's a small city, and their uncle is the mayor of the city. So they live in a mansion. They go there and it's Christmas Eve. They got 60 people. They got a DJ. They dance till 730 in the morning. And then the next day they go off. The father takes them into the jungle to drink tequila shots with the indigenous people and have festivals for like 12 hours. And then and then they they leave the house a week later and the two twins leave their house and travel with them. What? For another couple of weeks. No, it was con- it was crazy. Wow. Yeah. When you're 23, yeah, and there's a 29 year old woman involved, you're just you're beyond, you're speechless because yeah. you can't believe what's happening in your life. That's right. the greatest. That's the greatest time of his life so far. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I encourage. I'm jealous. Well, because what are we doing? We're at the St. Louis Funny Bone, <laughs> you know, eat, <laughs> eating chicken wings between shows, and you try not to because I just got my uh, my uh, physical and my cholesterol's up a little bit, so I gotta. I got to watch that. Yeah, but I how can, do you? I, that's the problem of being ju- on the road. I Sometimes know. there's so few choices. I know. That's our, but we can, we can find them. How? Well, just, all right, there's usually something uh, at the hotel, maybe. Sometimes so- not. Oh, sometimes not. It is more difficult. Yeah. But if you are diligent, you can do it. Yeah. You know, salad without dressing. Oh, that's God. A, I know, right? That's tough. I have to see her in three months, so I've got to work real hard So right if now. you're in the green room. You're stuck. You, there's no food. True. What do you get off the menu? Oh, well, if you you hope they have a salad, but a lot of yeah. times they don't. Right. So like you said, uh, chicken wings would be probably, the, how sad is that? Yeah. The, healthiest the healthiest option. The healthiest thing on the Because they might, <laughs> then, you, you have, then you have to eat the sticks of carrots. But you're right. I mean, because you could say, do you have baked wings maybe? Uh-huh. But probably not. Uh-huh. I guess at that point, a cheeseburger might be healthier. Mm. 
I don't know. No, you just start going no bun, all that stuff, right? Yeah, right. Uh, and then they put you in a hotel that has no restaurant, right? And it's not walking distance. Where I, nope. I was like, did you guys kind of like have a vision of how I would eat for these three days? <laughs> was there any thought nope. given? You know, people are like, do you explore the city when you're there? Like, no, no, I sleep. Yes, I work at night. You understand? I want to be love fresh. That. I know. Yeah. Oh, just- I get I get DMs from people. Oh, I I see you're going to Lexington, Kentucky. You got to go to uh, BJ's Barbecue. Really? No, I don't. No, <laughs> no I don't. I need to. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I need to go to the closest <laughs> restaurant to my yes. hotel at two in the afternoon. Right. I uh, please someone take me. Maybe maybe after uh, press. Yeah. Someone should take me to a nice right. little spot where I can get some good, where I can avoid, like, not order the biscuits and gravy, which is very hard for me. Do you go, do you play Hilarities in Cleveland? Haven't yet. Okay, because they take you out. There's a famous uh, pastrami. It's a, okay. they have a breakfast, uh, not not pastrami. Um, what do you call the meat they serve? Hash. Okay. Corned beef hash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a famous place okay. in Cleveland. I'm not, not to my knowledge. I, maybe I've been there. I don't think so. It does, doesn't resonate, this in, invitation to their hash breakfast. But <laughs> I look forward to it. I'll yeah. reference you when I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. Drop my name and you'll yeah. get a little extra dollop. You know something. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you know, dude, it's whatever, right? Um, after COVID, I turned 60. Yeah. And it's never happened before where I have not had a wealth of work. I've been very blessed, so I can't complain. You mean you have more? Well, I'm looking at your IMDb page. Yeah. Not only are you doing like 40 weeks a year on the road, you have project after project lined right. up right now. Either that's really, do I? Where are they? Is that well, right? I'll tell you right now. Okay. You got a show called uh, Reaper, Reaper's Night is oh a movie. Oh, my God. Reaper's Night's been on. I hope it works. Reaper's Night's been on there for two years. Oh. Okay. It's a Reaper. movie they're trying to get released. I guess. Reaper's Night. What else do I have? Birth and Hathaway? Uh, that was a film short done. Uh, didn't pay money, but that's fine. I got to be I got to hang out and shoot with my good friend Larry Clark. That was that was the payment for me. Dashing through the snow, that yep. sounds like a, a hallmark money grab. <laughs> that's a <laughs> that's a thriller Santa assassination movie. Really? Shot that in uh, Lake Arrowhead back in February. I'm in on yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. So it's a Christmas release. I guess, yeah. Did you get paid on that? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Rock me. Rock me. Oh my God, really? That's yeah. on there. It says that three years coming up soon. Three years ago. Yeah. Uh, Austin, Texas, in the can. No one bought it. Yeah. I love this though. Wow. Upcoming projects. Look, makes it look like I'm really busy. I got a lot going on. I like that. Half baked, totally high. Wow. Already released on DVD. <laughs> DVDs? That's where There's it no is. such thing as a DVD. That's where it is. Nobody has a player. Something. I don't know. I, to me, I was puzzled, too. I was like, where's this going? <laughs> where's this going? Were you high when you made the deal? What? Okay. We got a Betamax deal on this one. <laughs> it's going to be on KCAL 9 and Betamax. It may have been on one of the streamers. I don't even uh, know. I don't even know. <laughs> wow. But it was it a, was it a uh, spinoff of Half Yes, it was, it was a... Uh, so uh, this other kid plays Dave Chappelle's son. Yeah. And Dave, of course, doesn't show up in it. Harlan's in it. Yeah. Um, and then the gal that was in the original is in it. Jim Brewer? Nope, no Brewer. Neil Brennan involved in any nope. way? No, no, not in any way. So they did get the title though. That's yeah, good. Yeah. So I mean, you know what? what they can, right? Yeah. Yeah. Give them twenty five cents. Take it. So it's whatever. It was more work. I was very happy to have it. Mike it, Titties is a good dude. I worked with him before. What's so, his yeah. name? Titties. T i d d. Tidies. Titties. I think he probably preferred tidies. <laughs> Either way, you're getting you're getting some fun. I had a Shakespeare professor in college, and it was the first day of class, and I said, uh, uh. Professor Simone, I was wondering about this balcony scene. He goes, it's it's semen. And I was like, oh, no, just no, giving no. you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> just thought I'd give it a shot. <laughs> what? <laughs> semen. Why not just change the pronunciation? Yes, sir. You know? What? Yeah. Your whole life. Yeah. No, it's gobble it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's by the, by, by the tablespoon. <laughs> He's a base. He's playing baseball. He's in the outfield. Ball comes to Siemens all over that one. Uh, my uh, friend uh, uh, Norm Hiscock. True. Name. No, it's not. You, you know Norm Hiscock. Norm Hiscock was head writer for Kids in the Hall. 
Norm Hiscock. <laughs> it's a, it's a Nova Scotian surname. Yeah. There's a lot of people in Nova Scotia that have that surname. Right. And uh, so Norm, when he got married, uh, he had daughters, so he took he had them take his wife's name, Park. Park. Yes. So the hyphenated last name for her is Park Hiscock. <laughs> Park is You're a cock. genius. I never thought about that. You're a genius. But no, they just took the name Park and then his cock, I guess that of course his two daughters, so that, that strain will end. Oh, wow. I know. There was a guy in Boston who had two kids. Uh huh. Twins. His last name was Mac and Ernie. Okay. Named his kids Mac and Ernie Come Mac on. and Ernie. Why? Because he's just that stupid? Yeah. Ouch. How about Tom? You know Tom Cotter. Comedian uh, Tom Cotter. Okay, yeah. Great comic, dear friend, um, from from Rhode Island. So you got to picture the accent when I give you these names. Okay. Last name is Cotter. Named his kids Cam Cotter and Harry Cotter. Okay. But wh- 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 like Cam Corder oh, and Harry Potter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did he do that on purpose? Yeah. Why? Because he's funny. It's, he's one of those guys that is just, he's hes corny funny, but okay. in a way that works. I, 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 I relate to that because mm. I, I don't shy away from any corn pone. Yeah. You know, sell it harder. Yeah. You, you sell the corn pone harder. I was thinking work. about how I think that there's a part of me that's a hack, you know, especially when I'm headlining. Okay. I'll pull out some hack sure, stuff. Of course. You know, yeah. little hacky crowd work. Yeah. And I think to myself- as great of a comic as you are, kind of the most interesting part of the set I'm watching is when you do your hacky stuff. Yeah. That's what makes me go, this guy gives a shit about the audience. He's a performer, and he wants to kill. Can I tell you, I do this one part. Dana, I think I've told you this before. Dana told me when I started. I started when- Dana Eve, Gould? Yes. When Eve was, Eve was born- is when I, 13 years ago, it was when I decided I better start doing stand-up. Yeah. Just to have it, because I've always done live performance, but I wasn't a stand-up. I came from the sketch and improv world. Yeah. And so I decided, you know what, I better just have it in my bag. And I, I did three weeks, three months in town, developing an hour, which people won't like to hear this, wasn't that hard in my mind. <laughs> just because I've, I've done I had tons of live stuff. Well, you're also leaving out the fact that you did a comedy team yes. for about a decade. Yes. Called yes. Naked Trucker, yes, which, which was, was standing in front of live yep. crowds in clubs, and I closed with three songs from the Trucker. So okay. I, I had a close. Right. You know, that was that was done. And basically, what I did was a one man show. My first hour was a one man oh, show. Oh, I remember it. Yeah, I, I had wigs and yep. changes. People were like, "What's going on?" I had no idea. Like, this doesn't work in clubs, Dave. Anyway, um, well, but oh, oh, I love that. Yeah. I love stand up has become so. Like one dimensional. Everybody just gets up. They take the mic out of the stand. They move the mic stand. They maybe move one step to the left or the right. They talk about mostly the same stuff. They close the same way. Have it a half of your host. And then you got somebody that goes up and does. There's a guy named Moses Storm. That yeah. He's great. He'll run out into the crowd and he's always in the moment. Yeah. And I just love when I see somebody new and fresh that's like shaking it up. So when I saw you doing that stuff, I was like, fucking yeah, here's what a creative person. Here's the rules in stand up. Right. Here's the stage. Here's the mic. You got 15 minutes. Do whatever you want. Exactly. Do whatever you want. And you're exploring yep. it. Dana told me, go out in the audience. They know you from TV. I've been doing it since. And that's where the corn pone is. Because I do this bit in my act where I say, and it's true, the woman's always better looking than the man she's with. You've seen yeah, this. Yeah. So it's true. Like, <laughs> why are you with this guy? Yeah. You're better, you know, anyway, so I go in the audience to explore this premise, uh-huh. which is nice because now I'm only going to go compliment the women. You're right. And it's corny. And I'll go out there and go, bald guy, of course, he's got a gorgeous wife. How corny is that? <laughs> then I'll look for every bald guy in the audience. Bald guy, gorgeous. Bald guy, gorgeous. They love it. And every once in a while, some girl will raise her hand. Me? What about me? Are you are you asking if you're better looking? Yeah. Oh, are you a narcissist? Look at me. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's got to be tough when you're walking past the table. Yes. You've well, just it, announced this premise, and you take a quick glance and keep moving. Yes. Well, you know how it goes. I mean, you, you've got all your jokes built in. Yes. You've done There's yes. 50 jokes that I've done right. over time right. that are just laying there. Yep. Let me guess. This is a family table? Let's leave that alone, shall we? You know. <laughs> What's this, the lumberjack table? Good Lord. Looks like I found the swingers table. I mean, all of it. All of it. 
Good Lord, sir, are you a dentist? How'd you score this? No way. This is not your Let me guess. Farmers only? Corn Pone Central. And then you clip it up, you put it on Instagram, I should. and you sell tickets. I don't. Why Do not? You, because I'm stupid. Do you clip? Well, you, we, you, you and you I are to. both with I the know. same social media person, yeah. which yes. is Beth Hoops yep. out of St. Louis, yep. Midcoast Media. They do a great job. Yep. They produce this podcast on top oh, of the nice. social media. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they are always begging me, give us Clips. clips. clips yeah. And I just don't. I know. Why? I, I, you know, I just like, aren't I enough? Yeah. You know, but also it would work. It's all about clips. Of course clips now. it would work. It's all, right. all about clips. So then, oh, so in three months I have to go see my doctor again. Yeah. Right to make sure my cholesterol's God, down. God, you're obsessed with this. And three months, you and I have to have start doing clips. Okay. All right. Well, you and I always challenge each other on this podcast. The, yeah. There was an episode, I want to say, ten years ago, uh-huh. where we were talking about all the people we knew that did transcendental meditation and how their lives were better. And we go, and I think you challenged me. You go, let's let's go study it. Yep. So we did it. We went to the Beverly Hills yes, we did. TM Center. Which was amazing. It was amazing. And we had a guy in our class. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> this is true, folks. All right, tell this, tell no, about you tell you tell it better. All it's right. a true story. So it's just the three of us. Yeah. Me, Greg, and this kid. Yeah. Who's in his twenties. He's yeah, early twenties. Yes. And he shows up and I mean bloodshot eyes, yep. hair he's beautiful looking. But he's clearly a rich kid, and his hair is all fucked up. Can we tell the people? So TM is a, a, a solid practice of meditation. There's nothing weird about it. It's it's they don't listen. You do the thing. They never ask you for another dime. Yep. It's just giving you the gift of serene meditation. We go in the afternoon. The classes are an hour long. Someone's apartment or whatever, and they they give the instruction. But anyway, this kid. So he sits down, and uh, he can't. We're we're getting various degrees. I, I I'm getting into it pretty easily, and I'm finding like, wow, this shit really works. He can't get it. No. He keeps. Ah, am I doing it right? Am I sitting wrong? And and then he comes in, and the next time he comes in, and you know, we're getting more progressively deeper into it, and he's just struggling. He's almost distracting. And then the third time he comes in, and the teacher goes, you know, you should really not drink coffee before you come in. And then the kid looks her in the eye, and with a straight face, he goes. Um, what about if you've been doing cocaine? <laughs> you know, the anti-meditation <laughs> drug. Yeah, that'll slow your mind right down. Every time he have been doing a bunch of blow, I know what I'll do. I'll get gacked out. I'll get gacked out on coke and then go do some TM. Wow. Tell some stories <laughs> from my childhood. First time yeah. I got, every time you about the first time I got laid. <laughs> <laughs> and then you uh, get your mantra. We've talked about yeah. this before, which you can't tell anybody. You don't share it. You don't share it. Uh, I still do it. I get on a nice run of doing some TM, but if I miss a day, yeah. uh, it's hard for me to get back. I'll do like, a, sometimes if I want to be lazy, I'll do 11 minutes, not the 21. Right. But any time you spend. That's fine. Any time you spend is better yeah, yeah, than nothing. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's but like. Life's better when you do it. Life is better, and it's amazing. Like it's the same thing with working out. Like you struggle, you don't want to do it, and then ninety nine percent of the time you walk out and you go, "Why am I not doing yep. this every day?" Feel so much better. And yeah. I feel like, um, you know, when I do the TM, it's like you said, I can do it on the subway in New York nice. for six minutes yep. before a show, and it just changes your your shoulders drop, your feet are flat on the ground, you feel you feel the earth under you. And I don't know. The thoughts just slow down. It's true. Yeah. And if you if you're in regular practice, you're unstoppable. Right. So do we have to add that to our little basket of uh, of of to dos? No. Let's just focus on getting those clips, clips out. Yeah. Yeah. So I just do clips of me sitting there practicing <laughs> TM. <laughs> like I don't get this. Why am I supposed to watch? It's not funny. He seems like he's sleeping, but he's not snoring. <laughs> <laughs> and he's saying his mantra out loud. I thought we weren't supposed to know what it was. Ding dong. Ding dong. Uh, my buddy used to say, yeah, I got my mantra today. It's weird because uh, my, uh, my my instructor said my mantra is uh, Kechner is an asshole. So I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't seem like, first of all, you're not supposed to tell me. And uh, that doesn't seem like a mantra. <laughs> That's our former teacher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he gave it to that kid. Oh. 
Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, so we'll do clips. I think the, mm-hmm. the problem is you got to bring a camera on the road. Yeah, do you, do you have to? You can't use your phone? Well, see, you can you, use your phone if you do it right. But if I'm in the audience getting clips there, I have yeah. just somebody on a rig almost. Right. Either, you need two cameras. I know. I don't know. Sam Morell does a really good job with one camera. He doesn't really shoot the audience, but his are high quality. Yep. And, and he, you know, if you put in the uh, the text, you write the, what do you yep. call it? The, the subtitles? Yep, yep. On the on the screen Helps of what they're saying, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, you mean do, if he's doing crowd work? Yeah, you you write down what the right. person of the crowd do is do, saying. Do you do a lot of do you do dedicated crowd work every show? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, not the same stuff, but I go I go into the crowd, especially if it's a Friday night late show and the place is three quarters filled yeah. and they're drunk and you they're walk tired. In? Yeah, I walk on stage, yeah. and we're going to get to know everybody in the crowd. Oh, that's great. Because they're fine. not buying my material at that point. I get you. Yeah, Friday yeah. Night Late Show can be notoriously drunk. Yes, yes. And I love that. Okay. I'm a cowboy. That's great. Let me yell shit out. I can handle it. We'll have fun. What's my horse tonight? Okay. Right. Yeah. No saddle. Fine. I'll go do it. No harness. I'll hold on to his mane. That's who I am. This horse doesn't scare me. <laughs> I got this horse. I'll feed, Let's I'm ride. This, I'm gonna feed this horse so, some sugar cubes. So, well, you test it out a little bit. We go like, okay, I'll try some jokes, and if I like, okay. Oh not, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I find that like, it's almost like bringing back the sugar thing. The spoonful of sugar with the medicine. Like, I fuck around with them. The problem is, is if you kill too hard with the crowd work. Yep. Now your material is yep. really gonna yep. look bad. So I'm always sort of like, you know metering out how much crowd work I do. I just, enough to get them, if I'm losing them with material, I go into the crowd, get them back up, get them focused, more material, just back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you know you know how to write. You you know, I, I, I equate it to sailing, right? Yeah. Where's the wind? Where can I catch some wind? Right. And you're sailing over them, and like, okay, sometimes you're just dead in the water, and you got to paddle for a minute. Yep. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the end, you know, on those shows, you got to you also learn which you've learned over these years is like it may not be going well. But if you stand there with your chin up and you get through it, they're all going to walk out and go. That was a great show. It's true. You just can't. You just you can you can make little disparaging comments like, oh, this crowd's but you can't you can't, can't. lean on that. And, you uh, you know, Del Close said years ago, never blame the audience. Yeah. Never blame the audience. Right. Treat them like poets and artists, and they have a chance to become them. Now, they might be mm. drunken poets, and right. all the better. And it's true. It's always going better than you think. Right. Even when it's quiet or the bounce in the room's weird, it just yeah. goes straight up or whatever, the walls don't right. quite work. Um, then it's, you know, it's going better than you think. Right. And so just, yeah, like you said, chin up, persevere. Yeah. So Del Close, of course, is the founder of the uh, Second City in Chicago. Uh, no, he was with the Second City early on, but he was a, uh, his, his fame really came later in life when he started to teach long form oh, improvisation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he was a performer at Second City from the beginning. Then he kind of fell out of favor because he's a huge drug addict, drug addict self-admitted. Uh, and that's the path he went on. He would, he would uh, skin pop uh, speed. He was a speed popper. He used to, used to pop speed under your skin, I guess. That was a way of ingesting as well. He had a lot of pock marks all over his arms. Really? That would, he would, he would uh, brag about. Um, no kidding. Yes, yes. Would he do that before he performed? Uh, I don't probably yeah is my guess yeah years before I've often thought if I did cocaine and went on stage I would have the set of my life really well look at look at the guys that did it look at Robin Williams and you know those guys killed on cocaine yeah but Kennison I, yeah 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 I guess but it's not worth it but you no it's not worth it no. I wouldn't do it no I'm just saying in a scenario I feel like you're cheating the audience they're like maybe yeah I, I I'm pretty high energy anyway so wait, I want to get back to Dell close yes. and second city. So Dell then, uh, Dell was kind of down and out when I came to town in 8045 to Chicago, Shauna Halpern, who was my other teacher, she basically got Dell to come teach at her school, which is called the IO, the improv Olympic. Yeah. And cause Dell was destitute. in Chicago in Chicago. Yeah. Dell was destitute. He had nothing going on. No, no, you know, relationships, no work. So basically, she's like, hey, come work for me. And Dell started toying with the idea of this show called The Herald. The Herald is basically oh, a way to extend long form improvisation. Because the problem with long, form, uh, with long form improv is the scene starts, it's usually naturally over in two minutes. Yeah. And then what can happen to it? So Dell came up with an idea of like, how can we give this scene a second life and a third life? Right. So these scenes can come back in time. Right. You can go back in time or forward in time. But if you pay attention to what's going on, it became, his first structure was basically a down a dance of 
well, you do three uh, two-person scenes of different merit. Then there's a game because they'd still do games, improv right, games. Right. Then they do those the same three scenes again, another two or three minutes, then another game, and then those first three scenes again. Now, you would hope for success that it would all wrap up beautifully in this half so an hour. So the second section is informing the third section. Exactly. It was just calling back the first section. Exactly. I can remember doing stand-up before a Harold. Wow. And and they used the stand up. They oh. grabbed stuff from the stand up to create the scene. Nice. That was the UCB would do Harold. Oh yeah, didn't yeah. They, they yeah. Would, well, they would do what they. I, I created this show with Adam McKay called uh, the the Armando Diaz, and basically you'd have a monologist just tell a story about whatever the subject was, or camera, right. or phone, or, or yeah. cup. They just tell a story, and then we act out. We're inspired by that person's story. It okay. shouldn't be on the nose. Right. You don't want to do exactly what the person said, but take fr something thematically or emotionally or whatever from that, or even geographically from that person's monologue, and then start your scene. And those come back in time, too. Basically, that's what it ended up happening, was long form then became this freedom structure that took on a, a million different forms. Right. So everybody just came up with their own gag, you know, however they wanted to do it. You you lose the games because those are the least interesting part of it. Yeah, right. And that was just holding on to an old format that was successful that people understood. So the audience. It was the crowd this. work of the yes. show. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Well done. So <clears throat> when you did that, you had to have a lot of trust with your cast members, right? Yes. And, you know, when you're a student, there are varying degrees of, of uh, ability. Yeah. And you would always, you know, hope you get better scene partners mm -hmm. but even if you have the bad ones you could i could figure out how to make the scene work anyway yeah like if they just want to negate it or just keep changing it i just keep following that person because uh -huh. you, you can it's an easy to me it's an easy skill to do right it's not that difficult it's as easy as having a conversation but if you're kind of funny and you're also a little bit of a smart ass you can always make it work right right, right. and if you're you know halfway bright so to me i had a, a, a an elegance that i could portray in this field it was it was for me this was like what i was built to do but what's interesting is what you're saying is if it's not going well a stand-up instinct is to grab it take control of it yeah. and and what you're saying is just the opposite yes you can't you turn you it to, back over yep. to them you have to stay and you play it. off of them dig deeper wow yep. it's always about the last thing said dell would say uh it's watching it's driving looking through your rear, rear view mirror all i know is what we have right. had I right. don't know what's ahead of us. Right. So I can only rely on what we've already had, right? So if I say good morning, the other person goes, morning, it's afternoon. I'm like, did I sleep in again? Right? Yeah. That person negated yeah. me right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, right. You always sleep in. You're right. I'm the sleep in king. Except yesterday when we got up early. Yeah, I know. I was like schizophrenic. <laughs> like that. Some people <laughs> yeah, just yeah, don't yeah, know right, how to right, play right, it at all. Like, right. like they think they're going to be funny by getting you or uh -huh. something. They're usually a not, not, not a seasoned performer and someone who doesn't last long, you know. But And, and their marriage doesn't last no, long. No, it shouldn't. Yes. It shouldn't. Don't Imagine. negate your it's partner. I never thought about that. Uh -huh. uh, the way you play on stage is the, maybe probably the way you have your relationship. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. I remember I was at uh, Zach Galifianakis' wedding. Uh -huh. And uh, it was like everybody, it was kind of formal. Everybody dressed up. And I saw Patton Oswalt by the bathroom and he goes, this is just like prom night, except that we're not all losers. And I was like, <laughs> and I go, I actually had a really great prom night. And he goes, what a <laughs> passive aggressive thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> And it really hit me like, yeah, that's not how you talk to somebody at a wedding. You go with the bit. You go with the bit. But you're being honest. Yeah. He didn't like that I is was that a cool right? kid. Wow. Well, that's the thing about comedians is there's this thing that we're all losers and everybody's got to play that hand. No. And it's like, I was not a loser. No, you don't have to be a, yeah. a loser. Right. You can, be, you can be not interested in being the most popular. Doesn't right. make you a loser. Right. I wish I had done stand up back in Chicago. Now, when, when I did improv, it was verboten to do stand up. Well, there wasn't much stand up in well, Chicago. There was still, right? You could always find a scene. Yeah. But it was, it was really uh, looked down upon. Yeah. Because they didn't think you could do both successfully. Right. Like, if you did stand up, you're going to start bringing that on stage. Like, oh, I don't know the difference between a, a, a football uh, uh, a field and a basketball court. Yeah. Like, I'm going to immediately go, oh, uh, yeah, I got to do. Yeah. It's, come on, man. It yeah. was so dumb. I wish I had done it back then. Yeah. Because then I would have had that in my bag for more years. Right. And just another tool. Right? Yeah. I don't know about that. I think that you're one of those people that 
really took improv and applied it to show business successfully. That's true. That's true. Some people get caught in just doing improv and they're great at it, but they're not able to audition in a way that's more, you know, you your improv allowed you to connect. Yes. With people right. in a way that made you a really great actor. Yeah, it's it, you, people. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Jesus Christ! Well, you got like Wait, Hoswald. was that you just accepting? Feel, like, like, yes, Greg. I feel and like Patton, Patton Oswalt. Now I know what he <laughs> felt like in that bathroom at Galvanax's wedding that I was invited to. I wouldn't have gone. Um, that was a big name drop, wasn't that it? That was a nice one. Yeah, that didn't matter. Uh, well, thank you very much for saying so. Of course, but, Dave. Uh, well, we've been friends long enough. I didn't know I had to stop, drop, and blow you every time you gave me a compliment. <laughs> I mean, your daughter's here. Is that what we need? Listen, I'll do my work. I usually wait till after. But um, I tell you what, people do get married to improvisation because yeah. it gets culty. Right. And then they like, everything has to be improv. Like there right. should be improv TV shows. Like, no, there shouldn't. It yeah. doesn't work that way. Right. It's a jazz art form. All right. Uh -huh. You're going to do it on your jazz stage. Have fun. People dig it. Yeah. And that's it. Right. Now, right. maybe sometimes you can get an idea out of it. But if you watch, if you take your old sets, your improv sets and watch them back, it's rarely a show. Yeah. Nobody shows up at the stadium to see you run wind sprints <laughs> and do drills. That's right. That's Play right. Play the game. Play the game. Yeah. Yeah. Play the scripted show that I came to see. Unless it's improv, then it works. If you know, if you got a bunch of people that are good at it, right. it can work in that small context, right? You know, or if you're doing games like they do at uh, whatever at whose line, that's a whole different game, right? It's just games. That's not long form. Isn't it funny that that's the only improv show that's ever been successful on TV? Well, it makes sense because it's short form. You know, you can kind of rely on some old chestnuts yeah. for pretty much every show. And it's easy to digest from an audience standpoint. Right. The rest is takes it, when you are when it's on film or it's being filmed on a camera, it you, loses that yeah. transference. Right. It has to be live. Right. I mean, a lot of people feel like that about porn, but it seems to be really getting traction. <laughs> it doesn't have to be live. Yeah, ca yeah. I'm camera only. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to be in the room. <laughs> um, all right. So here's some things I want to talk to you okay. about. Um, have you done the Ancestry DNA? Because I know you're like yeah. German and Irish. And well, no, no. So my, 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 I didn't mean to say no, no. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. My last name is German, okay, but I'm not German. My grandfather oh. was adopted by the Kechners or Kirshners, as it should be. Um, so I'm from the small town of Missouri of uh, 2,000 people. Uh, there's like 30 German families there. Um, how they forgot how to say Kirshner is beyond me. How do they say it? Kechner. It's oh, wrong. It should be. How about it. this? How about just Kochner? Yeah. So I don't have to always like. How do I? How do I? Ugh. So my grandfather came from a, uh, an orphanage in New York City, and when he was four or five, got sent on an orphan train. They used to have orphan trains. He and his sister. Wait, what happened to his parents? Don't know. He was just given up for adoption. No shit. Yeah. For, her last name was Williams which we know is either uh, Irish or, 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 or uh, English, they were sent down to New Orleans and then sent up to the Midwest. They got separated. So here's this kid who's four or five years old, right? Wait, your grandfather My and grandfather. his sister? Yep. And they got separated up there somewhere. And so he goes to this Keckner family that was childless. And um, he was never accepted by the rest of the relatives because he was uh, adopted. So they never accepted him as a Keckner. Wow. He had a very, very angry man, from what I understand. I, I don't blame him. You're yanked out of the only place you know, this, you know, orphanage. He's how old at this point? Five. That's, you know. So old enough to know he's. Yes, I know people. And now right, I won't right, see him right. ever again. Yeah. And apparently this, this family is rather cold and um, uncaring. And German so, in the Midwest? Yeah. Really? Uh -huh. Really? <laughs> yes, I yeah. knew, right? <laughs> so then this little uh, group of Kechners was there. They, uh, Joe Keckner, my grandfather, had nine kids, and they all had big families. So I have 36 first cousins on my dad's side. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had family reunions every year, and that was it. It's just this group of Kechners. There are other Kechners in town. We weren't related to them, and we knew it. That was a big deal. Like, uh -huh. they're not your cousins. They're not blood. Right. And so it was just us. So when I got onto television, how could I change my name to, you know, to my 36 first cousins? You're saying it wrong. I should yeah, have. I yeah. should, could have taken my mother's name, which is Downey. Yeah. David Downey, throw a junior on there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I should or have. just Cook. Yeah. David Cook. David Cook. Or Cook. Yeah. Yes. Right. Whatever. 
but yeah, it you know didn't get my way. I, I've often thought would I have gained a little more, one more notch of fame had it been an easier name to pronounce. But that's you know, that's neither here nor there. There was a woman, and uh, we're going to assume she was an overweight black woman for oh, the sake of the story. Very good. We're in Boston, and she calls up the com the Fannie Hall Comedy Connection, and she says, uh, "Who's on the show tonight?" And they said, well, it's Anthony Clark, Jackie Flynn, and Greg Fitzsimmons. And she goes, is Grapefruit Simmons the headliner? <laughs> <laughs> and to this day, when I go to Boston, everybody calls me Grapefruit Simmons. I it's love not. it. And if I had any brains <laughs> in my head, I would have changed my stage name at that moment to Grapefruit Simmons. No, you couldn't. That is hack, sir. <laughs> Grapefruit Simmons. <laughs> what would that act be? Well, I mean, you got Earthquake. Yes. You remember there was a guy named Watermelon? Wait, but not Watermelon. Um, who was the guy he blew up at Montreal one year and he got a like a $2 million deal and he had just started doing... Anyway, um, I made t-shirts. And they're available, by the way, if you want to go to my website. Okay. There's a Grapefruit Simmons t-shirt. Oh, that's awesome. My son was wearing it yesterday when we took a hike. Nice. Um, I be Why does he wear it? Because I have boxes of them in the attic. Yeah, yeah. Did uh, uh, did you guys get stopped? Did he get stopped? Like, do you know Grapefruit? <laughs> I love Grapefruit Simmons. <laughs> Once in a while, some lunatic shows up at one of my shows wearing it, and I just want to go security. Uh, <laughs> keep an eye on this one. <laughs> I got his check. <clears throat> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, wait. So, did you do the ancestor DNA? Yes. Uh, I'm 67 percent Irish. Wow. Yes. So we're you know. We're all the way. And then yeah. the, like 13% uh, English, and then the rest, like everybody else has, some Eastern European and some African in there. You got a little African in Everybody you? does. Hey, now. I'm pretty sure. Have you done it? I did it, but I was 99% Irish. Wow. And then 1% Mongolian. Nice. There you Genghis go. Khan, they raped their way around the world. Joyfully. Everyone's got 1% of that, yeah. that rapey little DNA. Little in little them. Mongol. <laughs> um, my kids are a higher percentage Irish than I am. My ex-wife was, her family was Kelly Ooh. and, and uh, Morgan. Yeah. So they were Irish. So I guess it's possible. Some of my kids have a little higher percentage of Irish than I do. Have you taken your kids to Ireland? My kids want to go. We went this summer. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Went to Galway. Yep. And traveled around, went up to uh, Connemara, hiked up the Cliffs of Moher, went out to the Aran Islands. Just the four of you? No, we went with my sister and her two kids, my mother, that's my not, brother. That's great. Yeah, we got a big house. And oh. It was heaven. Heaven! Wow, how long How long did you go? Uh, just a week, and then we did a week in Spain. But as a writer, you know, I was an English major, as I told you about Professor okay. Seaman. Yeah. That's a, great, that's a great major, yeah. I'm reading William Faulkner right now, who's from wow. Missouri. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, William Faulkner's from huh. Missouri. And uh, I love writing. And uh, we went to the Aran Islands, and they had these little stone houses, small, yeah. overlooking the, the 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 Atlantic. And you're just like, I could write a novel here. There's nobody. It's an island. There you go. There's no distractions. Right. You just walk into town with your thick wool sweater. There's a light <laughs> rain. I don't drink, but I'd sit in the pub for for yeah. a couple hours. So you, were you tempted because everybody else was having a. <clears throat> a um a Guinness. And it was. Like, like, I what? haven't had a drink in thirty four years. Yeah, it's not worth it. And I was more tempted on this trip than I've ever been oh, in my life. Bet. Yeah, but luckily they had Guinness and A on tap. They do. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That'll do it. That's yeah, it fine. was fine. Yeah, yeah. It was fine. I'm waiting until I'm sixty five. What you gonna have a drink? I'm gonna have a, a highball at dinner every night. Really? Yeah. Why did you decide this? Because I figure by then. I'll have enough retirement money. I can't fuck up too bad. Like how, right how now, you, I'm afraid if I started drinking, yeah. I would lose everything. How do you get retirement money? I don't know. <laughs> Isn't there a government program or something? Yeah. How do you sign up yeah, for that? Yeah. Uh, 65, you decide you're going to have a highball a night. Okay. I'm 58, when I'm 65, I have a highball a night. What have your sober friends said? They know about this plan? They laugh. Okay. Bert Kreishner wants to throw a party the night oh, I start drinking. You don't want to do that. No. No. That won't be one highball. No, no. Because no. then everybody wants to have a highball with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm going to sip this all night. But, but from what I understand, and maybe you can corroborate this, the hangovers as you get older are way worse than when you were younger. Uh, it's been a minute for me. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. No. No. 
I mean, you know, I, 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 my, my desire is to be sober every day. Yeah. And I, I'm a relapse king. Um, so, but I would not say that unless you are was so stupid. I, I get smarter as you're older. Yeah. Uh, so if you're drinking, you know enough to have a, a drink and a, and a water. Right. At least I do. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, so no, not for me. I mean, if you just if you weren't drinking, it's all water. If you don't drink water, you're going to have a hangover. Yes, my friend Mike Gibbons is the king of that. Drinking a water, drinking a water yeah. all night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm I'd like to be the king of just water. Well, I I'm I say this is a it's it's a half joke. I sure. don't think I'll really do it. Uh-huh. I think if anything I'll probably take an edible every night. Uh, I, I think that's probably a safer way okay. to go. I, uh, they, uh, they don't let me sleep. I don't care if it's the one or the other, what's Indica and, the, uh, Indica, Indi, Indi, yeah, Indica couch, Indica. No, yeah. they, they make my mind spin. I don't, I'm not a marijuana fan. That's just no. me. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. It doesn't work for me. I was taking like little, uh, micro doses during COVID of, and, it, and thinking it helped me sleep. Of micro doses or of, of, of marijuana? Marijuana, two oh. and a half milligrams, okay. which is nothing. And uh, I thought it was helping me sleep, and then one day I stopped taking it, and I was sleeping exactly the same. So. Ah, and yeah. I was just getting groggy. I'd be groggy in the morning yeah. when I would take them. Yeah. So you'll know. <clears throat> my son. So my my uh, my younger son goes to, you know, the, there's this immersion program. He winds up in Peru. Yeah. So my oldest son, who's 25, goes, Yo, pop, ayahuasca. We're gonna go visit Sarge, right? Oh. I know, right? <clears throat> they have resorts now. Oh, do they really? Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course you know. And it's probably owned by Philip Morris or something. <laughs> we, we can only hope. Marriott and Philip Morris. This some old white man who's your guide. Like, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> right. Right. Some guy with a Hawaiian shirt named Chad. <laughs> yeah. He went to Penn State. You wind up smoking cigarettes the rest of your life. Like, what happened? <laughs> I'm wearing flip flops in my 60s. My toenails are all dried <laughs> Listening out. Listening to what's his name from Jimmy Mar- Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you kids won't talk to you anymore. <clears throat> But you're enlightened now. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. I'm moving to Florida. Dad, your skin should not be in Florida. That's where I'm going. He was dead in a week. <laughs> Every week, zapping uh, off a piece of skin. Uh, what so, Faulkner book are you reading right now? As I Lay Dying. Okay. It's interesting because it's told, it's the same story told from a different point of view. It's almost like what you're talking about with the Herald. It's it's the same story, but it's told from a different first person each chapter Mm -hmm. each character takes their turn telling the story and it's a story about uh the grandmother dies and they want to bring her back to the town she grew up in so they strap her body to the top of the stage wow and as they're going you know fucking crows are eating at her but everybody's got a dip you know one brother he's got he's got an old girlfriend that's back there he wants to see her the other guy he's got dental work it's a road trip there it's a road trip it's a movie it's the first road trip wow yeah 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 uh, is that a short story? No, it's a novel. I think I have a, a Faulkner book of collected short stories. So I'll have to look at it today. If I can find it, I'll start reading it with Missouri, you. Missouri, <clears throat> man. Yeah. Missouri. Mark Twain. You know what Mark Twain means? What? Two fathoms here. No kidding. Yeah. It's a, it's a river term because he worked as a riverboat guy. And so you'd have to be in front of the riverboat because they're a flat bottom boat. Remember the big propeller on yeah. the back that doesn't dip down? And uh, the, the uh, river uh, shifts all the time, the silt. Is yeah. constantly shifting, so you have to find out where you what's navigable. Yeah, and so you put your pole in the water, and you say two fathoms here, Mark Twain. Really? That's where that came from. Yeah. Wow. Now, if that's not a boring thing for your podcast, sir, I can't. Well, more than that. we uh, my work down to my stand up. <laughs> <laughs> You're bald. Is your wife hot? <laughs> um, my my wife is reading Huckleberry Finn right now really? with, her, with her book group. Her book group. Yeah. Wow. There's seven. All, all gals. All gals. And uh, they usually read, I guess there's a book that's based on Huck Finn that's a modern book. And so they're reading this to prepare themselves for the. <laughs> for the reading some, some of the language. They really love reading some of that out loud, don't they? Well, you know, the the schools now down south are taking out. Are they? Not just the N word. They're taking out any depiction of anything that will make white people uncomfortable about that's, race. That's, yeah, Florida. That's horrible. I know. Uh, it's, uh, it's a moment in time, man. Yeah. Uh, so any divorcees in your wife's book group? Lesbians. They're almost all lesbians. Really? Yeah. Okay. And one of them is very progressive. and uh, So so progressive that she's uh, open to bringing a guy <laughs> into her lesbian? <laughs> that is, that's progressive. That's progressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
She's not going to be defined by the word no. lesbian. No. No. So one of them said, my, my wife said, uh, they were talking about uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Uh-huh. And um, my wife referred to them as shysters. Oh, and boy. one of them is Jewish. And she goes, that's anti-Semitic. Uh-huh. And she really laid into her. Uh-huh. And I was like, my wife grew up on the Upper West Side right. of New York. She, Yiddish she, was, every yeah. other word was Yiddish. Yes, yes. These are just words. That and, were... and my wife's Jewish. Oh, my gosh. But she's not practicing, the woman oh, so pointed what? out. She said, well, you're not practicing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Did, are these recorded? I'm done. They should be. Yeah. Wow. How is it they're all lesbians? What's going on with your wife? Are you nervous? I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think it's great. <laughs> No, I don't know. It's a, it's well, a, that's, that's, that's wonderful. We've that known them got... since our their, our kids all went to preschool okay. together. So okay. they've been friends. So they for became many years. lesbians over time. <laughs> I think it's because my wife is so hot. Okay. That oh, they've all, yeah. Oh, they, okay. she, she transitioned all of them. Okay, she yeah. did. Yeah. They're all hopeful. Okay, yeah. got you. Right. <sighs> book club. Would you have time for a book club? The one book club I did was there was a book called you know Charlie Kaufman. He wrote. Yep. Uh, um, Sat next to him on a plane once. You did? Yes. First class? Yeah. Moving and Badger was coach. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? Did you recognize him? Uh, we did, uh, both of us eventually, after a little bit. Yeah. Wait, so his movies, were, did he do Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless no, Mind? No, he did. Um, the one about the locusts the down down south. Yeah, the one about the, the flowers. Oh, Wait, somebody look up Charlie Kaufman. We'll, we'll K-A-U-F. Pause. Anyway, so... Nick Cage was in it. So how did you know it was him on the plane? I think I could recognize him. I'd seen yeah. him before. I forget okay. how it came up. He knew who I was, yeah. I think. But uh, should I be honest? Yeah. I was drinking then. Yeah. He did Eternal Sunshine. Oh, Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Did he mind. write it or did he do the screenplay? Um, yeah, he wrote the screenplay. He got the Oscar for it, I think. Yes, is being John Malkovich. Yeah. And there's one more. And there's there? one more really big one. The one that was adaptation. 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 Thank he you. He won sir. the Oscar for adaptation. Yes. Yeah. So I got progressively drunk. And I think yeah. by the end, he's like, no, thank you. <laughs> we, we, we exchanged numbers. <laughs> Did you? Yes. I, Should we call him now? Nope, no Come way, on, man. No way. He wouldn't pick up. Who can we call? No one. Yep. There it is. It's called John C. Riley. Wow. Look Call John C. Riley right no. now. Call. Uh, last time I talked to Riley, he's like, uh, I don't have you in my contacts. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Who's this? Really? Okay. I forget why he's texting him for about something, you know? Yeah. Whatever. So, anyway, Charlie Kaufman <clears throat> wrote this book called Ant Kind. Okay. And I had read a review and it looked amazing. And I was like, all right, I got to read this. But it was like 570 pages That's long. That's up. Yeah. So I was like, all right, the only way I'm going to get through this is if, the, if there's a book club. Okay. Because I was an English major, so it yeah, was like yeah. once a week you had to meet and you had to have read three chapters. Okay. So I said it on my podcast. I said, who wants to be in the Ant Kind book club? And so we had like 30 or 40 people sign wow. up. And we got on a Zoom call once a week and we read one or two chapters a week and then we discussed it on the Zoom call. You had to read it outside. You don't read it during no, the No, you Zoom. read it outside. Yes. Okay. And then we had a discussion about it. Okay. And we did it for like... Two two and a half months we two, met two every week. Book. Yeah, and people fell off. Went from forty to thirty. I mean, it was a wow. de- it was one of the funniest books I've ever read. Wow, really How do you fall off. If Grapefruit Simmons <laughs> is the one leading <laughs> this know. book club, it's hard to I ain't imagine. leaving. Even if I'm lying about yeah, reading yeah, it, yeah, right, right. I'm like, but I'm gonna catch up. Yeah, I'm gonna catch up. Yeah, people fell out. They fell out. Oh. Not too many. We lost about half of them by okay. the end. But uh, and there was some characters. There was this one woman who was like not super educated and she was really pushing herself to stay with it. OK. And she got really like motivated and she felt really good about herself. Yeah. And she'd bring up points that were just very obtuse and funny. OK. And it was an interesting look at it that yeah. other people weren't seeing. Uh, yeah, it was great. But I'd recommend it. But it's long. Yeah. Have you read? Uh, um, what's my favorite funniest book of all time? Um, Jojo, what's the book we love? Confederacy oh, Dunces. I have not read it. That's at the is top it, of your that, list. I've got it. I own it. That's that's the. Oh, you do. Yeah. Yeah, it's the yeah, funniest yeah. book of all time. Uh, let's see. You ever read? Uh, some of my favorites are. Uh, um, what's his name? He's a writer out of Missouri, and I read this book years ago. The Living End. 
is the name of the book, and the writer's from Missouri, and he had uh, cerebral palsy or something like that. Really? Yes. He also wrote, oh, gosh, they're living in. Will you guys look it up, or do I have to? Maybe Great writer. Huh? We'll get it. You'll get it. Thank you, guys. Got the crack team over there. Crack team over there. We'll cut this out. This is live, no, right? No, we don't cut anything you out. You leave the warts in, because that's the yes. fun stuff. Yeah. Um, Should I read that? Dick Gibson show is very funny, right? But the same writer. It's a long one. Okay. It's about a guy. It always reminds me of Phil Hendry, because in the book, um, the the guy that's that comes to the radio studio steals other people's voices. Like you're stealing my voice. He makes them say different things. Oh wow! So inventive. Yes. Is it the Stanley Elkin? Stanley Elkin. Yes. Okay. Uh, give me two more of Elkin's books. Dick Gibson show, The Living End, and uh, I just. Maybe George Mills. Yeah. There's one where. Dick Gibson show. Dick Gibson show. The franchise. It's a great one. Dick yeah. Gibson show. But there's this other one. I forget what. Maybe it's George Mills. Maybe it's George Mills where. He talks about this woman with a very, very large vagina, and he keeps coming back to it. It's just so odd, but so beautiful. And then you also know that he's handicapped. Uh, so what, what's going on in his mind? Yeah, is just, yeah. Wow. It's stirring. I had, weren't you in the Phil Hendry documentary? I don't think so. Because I just had Phil Hendry on the show. Oh, you did? I and love he, him so much. Oh, my God. I think I sworn you were in it, but. Such an immense talent. Which does now? Did, what did that show wane over years? Because I remember when I first moved to LA, I would sit in my car, yep, and listen Same to it. Same with me, yep. You, I would be at parties, and me and other guys would go out to the car to listen to Phil Hendry, yeah, because it was just so magical. It was magical, and it was like uh, the whole thing was a stunt, but he was so grounded in it. It was like a prank show every single night, but yet you were seeing a guy who had a point of view, mm -hmm. like his politics he didn't wear them on his sleeve they just came out through the characters and the characters were the people that were calling in as much as his own it was amazing how did that end i don't even well know. he does a podcast yeah. now that i guess is same. pretty popular okay good um but he they did a documentary about him that i think got released which you should try to find it's yeah. streaming he's just yeah uh, an immense talent yeah uh, unrecognized uh, but it, the enormity of his talent is is almost unspeakable. Yeah. Because you can't describe what he does. Right. And no one's done it that I know of. No. Ah. Uh, because he makes all of this beautiful stuff up. Yeah. Uh, it's a talent beyond my capacity to understand. Yeah. If you haven't heard Phil Hendry, check him out and and listen to the podcast that I look at me looking straight down the barrel and there you go. and check out the podcast. We did it about what was that about three months ago, Phil Hendry? Yeah, about three months ago. I, um, I I remember meeting him and he knew what I was who I was and that to me was <clears throat> the greatest. Oh no of kidding! All. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Years ago. You're yeah. Like, oh my God! You know who I am? I'm like, yeah. I mean, I'm on bended knee here. Right. <clears throat> yeah. But, um. Have you ever been in a fist fight? No, I don't fight. Never. I know. I never have. So I was from a very small town. Yeah. And I was liked enough, and I was I was always very small. Yeah. And uh, really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't grow until I was in high school. I was five foot tall when I was a freshman in high school. Mm. So you know, I wasn't looking to fight. <clears throat> I always had a smart mouth so I could make people laugh. And yeah. like that, we know we all knew each other, the yeah. whole town, right. since, you know, kindergarten. So what are you going to do? You know, the new guy has to fight, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I never got in a fight. And being gay wasn't like a thing in your <laughs> Still town. Still isn't. Was it? Still isn't. <laughs> we had a couple fellas, but yeah. no one ever made a big issue about it. No kidding. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah. And we had a very small black community. And that there, I don't. They were pygmies. <laughs> <clears throat> Mark Twain. Um, <laughs> two pygmies here. Yeah. Um, we had a small African American community, and so there wasn't uh, a feeling of racism. Although there were, they lived across the tracks. As sad as that is to yeah, admit. Yeah. Right. Um, and like me and Frank. Frank is one of the guys from that community uh made it out of town in a big way like frank worked at the white house get out of here frank worked for seven presidents in the yeah he was, he was worked in, uh, went to the army and <clears throat> became a communication specialist no kidding. yeah yeah and then after a while he quit the army and then just became a a, a a contractor and did the same job 
So you and him are the big names out of that. What's the name of the town? uh, Tipton. Oh, yeah, Tipton, of course. To me, yeah, like me and Frank went on to do something. Yeah. You know, like of note, Yeah, if you will, yeah. And how far is that from St. Louis? It was dead center. Tipton's dead center. You, you've seen the show, The Ozarks. Yeah. Tipton is 40 miles north of the Ozarks. When the Ozarks are dead center of Missouri. Got it. Yeah. And so St. Louis, you consider like your home city pretty much. No, Kansas City because my mom oh, is city. from near there. Okay. My sisters all live there. <clears throat> and so it, my, my cousins were from there too. And what's the big benefit that you do every year? Big Slick. And that's in Kansas, in Kansas City? City, yeah. In Kansas City. It's myself and Riggle and Rudd and Stone Street and Sedakis and Heidi Gardner. Uh, and we raised money for Children's Mercy Hospital. And uh, this year we raised almost $4 million. I couldn't stay for the whole thing because my $4 daughter was, million? Yeah, dollars. yeah, yeah. And we how do, much is that to cover your guys' first class airfare? About a million, I'm guessing. <laughs> I, that is true. I mean, there's, you, know, you, you don't you don't talk about that. Like, what it costs to get all these fools here? Uh, <clears throat> but it's it's a great charity. That's amazing. Yep. Twenty five million dollars over fifteen years. Wow. And it, it goes to pediatric cancer research, and they've made a difference. That is amazing. They just charted some new thing because yeah. it's all about charting, where you can find the genesis and the the how. If, if that might be prevalent in the family so right. they can look at it early. So, that, you know, when you get an earliest look at what might potentially happen, that's a big deal. And so that's all just a swab in the cheek, right? I'm guessing, yeah. Yeah, I think it's really, uh, I think it's really easy. I'm against it, but. what Swabbing your cheek? <laughs> no, just so, you know. Um, all right, let's do fast balls with Fitz. Okay. Fitz balls. Oh, grapefruit chill. <laughs> Grapefruit Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what's the matter? You seem very, very upset. Oh, what's, he's got cough oh, drops oh. for you. I always have a, something in my throat. Yeah. You will after the show, yeah. after all the compliments <laughs> I gave you. <laughs> I was given lozenges, folks. Lozenges. My kids always say, like, Dad, you make so many noises. Like, yeah, well. Yeah. Now you're going to make more because you're <laughs> chopping on the mic. I'd rather hear you cough once in a while. <laughs> Um, you have a good host here. Yes. I'm a good host, right? Yeah. I don't talk about you. I'm talking about the young man oh, that runs okay. the studio. You know. Mm-hmm. How many times have you been on this show? Uh, maybe five. No, way more than that. More than that? I would say eight. I'd say eight. Yeah. <laughs> Three weren't great. Three were forgettable. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So uh, how did you lose your virginity in a small town like that? I didn't. You let you lost it after you left mm-hmm. town. Mm-hmm. No kidding. Who's gonna screw around with the smart ass? Can't, spit the fucking thing out, she, Paul. What are you doing to us here? I mean, how where do you put a night guard in his mouth? How quickly compliant was I? <laughs> it's, spit that out. You spit that cum out of your mouth. <laughs> Look me in the eye when you do it. <laughs> you don't swallow my cum, Mister. Um, <clears throat> a dirty show. Uh, not till I was a freshman in college. Wow. So yep. high school, did you get close? Was there a girl no. that you wanted to with? Yeah, but they weren't interested. They weren't no. interested in it's you. It's a small town. You've all known each other since, like that, since you were four years old. Yeah, but you're not hard on the eyes. You got yeah, good confidence. I, who knows? Maybe just too too much. You I were know, too I'm, much. I'm too much. Yeah, I, yeah. I could see I'd that. I'd rather get a laugh than a kiss. Right. No, that weird? Right, right. At the time, I think that's where my mind was. So probably. freshman year, you're bottled up like a can. <clears throat> You're like a revolutionary war cannon. You are ready to go. And who is she? Is she in the dorm with you? <laughs> no. Her name's Kate. And we go, um, we're at, it's a Benedictine college which just had that controversial speech from um, Butker. Oh, that's right. I had to go there because my parents uh, were Catholic. Yeah. And my uncle was the abbot of the monastery associated with the college. So I had to go there. There was no choice. So obviously Catholic schools, a lot of drinking. And in the first semester of that year, went to some party, got really drunk. And me and this other girl were stumbling home together. Uh, and we go in, there, there's a, a, a schoolyard, a bunch of buses. I push open the door. Sure enough, it opens. We go in there and probably 20, 30 seconds later, <laughs> we, we exit. <laughs> like tigers, right? Yes. I remember thinking, yeah. I can't believe this is finally happening. 
<laughs> it's about time. <laughs> on a school bus. On a school bus. The most perverted place <laughs> on the planet to have children sex. Children sit in these children buses. Children sit in the They'll bus. They'll be in these buses the next oh, day. God. Now, this is before, you know, now those those buses would be, you know, uh, surveilled by security cameras. Of course. But this is 40 years ago. Right. Yeah. And you having sex with a drunk girl would be headlines in the paper the next day. Well, not me. But yeah. Yeah. Right. Me now, probably. Did probably. you date after that or was that no. just, that was a one time? No, I probably should have. Yeah. But I really wasn't interested in her, to be honest. Uh-huh. Uh, and I don't know what she wanted either. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't talk about it much. Right. And then she started dating a guy quickly thereafter. It's a bus. You get yeah. on, you get off, you, know? you get where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. You don't loiter on the bus. No. You're stop. You got this, off with your stop. stop. This yeah. is it. Bye. <laughs> Won't see you tomorrow. But again, that was a very small school, too. Yeah. So anything that's going on is, is immediately gossiped about. It's like, right. I went from a small town to a small school. I was just like, please. Yeah. Can I just disappear? Right. Yeah. Have you ever not finished a set on stage? This is another fit, Fastballs with Fitz question. <sighs> not to my knowledge. Wow, good for you. Why would I? For what reason? Well, some the, people, the, you know, things get ugly and they bail. Oh, no, no, no. Like, like no. No. It's because you're working. You're a working yeah, I'm gonna man. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to yeah. finish it. You're a yeah. journeyman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, what's the hackiest bit you've ever done? <sighs> Oof. Wow, how many are there? <laughs> uh, hackiest <laughs> bit I've ever done. Wow, that's a good one. Oof. Gosh, it doesn't come to mind. I know there's tons of them. Well, obviously, going out in the audience is kind of hacky, but they love it. I don't I, I, I don't think that's hacky. I will have comics go, that was amazing. I'm like, that bit? Yeah. Comics, who you think are young comics are going to judge you, right. as they should. Yeah. And like they're like, that was the most amazing thing. Yeah. Like, that bit? All right. Where I go out and say, bald guys. Okay, th- okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Um, hackiest. Oh, I can't think. Uh, I used to do some bald jokes about myself. Like what? Uh, it was like my my kids would say, Dad, don't leave the house without a hat. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? Is there a sniper out there going, just wait. Just wait for old bull cube hole to get out here. I'm going to take him down. Like, Don't let that be seen. <laughs> I guess that's not that hacky. All right, before we go, yes. I'd be remiss. You mm. do a thing. On, well, first of all, I want to give out your tour dates. but okay. There's a lot of them. One of the things you do when you go on the road is you play the office trivia game yes. with the audience. We added a show a couple of years ago called uh, Office Trivia with the Real Todd Packer. So we do, I do like four or five stand-up shows, and there'll be an added show, usually on a Saturday afternoon, a matinee. We do a four o'clock office trivia hosted by the Real Todd Packer. The guy I tour with and have for years, Rob Mayer, came up with the idea and wrote the subsequent trivia questions. We three rounds of trivia. I come out host as Todd Packer. You know, people love that show so yeah. much. It's crazy. So that okay. show will sell out before my show's done. No yep. kidding. Yep. But then that pushes people to the stand-up I think show. so. I think so. Right? Whatever works, right? All right. We've got my staff over here. Okay. We got What do we oh, got? Boy. Five people? Okay. All Office fans. I know my right. daughter is a, a huge Office fan. Right. She's probably seen she's probably seen the series, what, about four times all the way through? That's 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 mild. We have people yeah. who watch it fifty times. Right. I've never watched, so I won't. Is that right? That's correct. Not to be. I'm, look, I just finished The Sopranos. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for trivia questions from uh, Reaper Night, Reaper's Night, Reaper's and Birth Night. and Hathaway. I can't wait for it to happen. Those are gonna be your next trivia nights. Yes, at Reaper's, your shows. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna ask you to ask them three office trivia questions. Okay. Whoever wins, I'm going to buy lunch for after the show. Uh, all right. How many children does Meredith have? Is number one. Um, where does uh, Rain Wilson stash the chandelier he stole from Tiffany's? Got it? Um, <clears throat> what was the first episode Todd Packer was in? What was it called? Wow. Um What's the episode called where um, Kevin spills his chili? I think that's five, isn't it? One more. One more. Um, I should know. I, I'm giving away, the, you know, these are the ones I hear every week, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, how many uh, love bumps does Todd Packer say he has on his ding dong? <laughs> and I, I always say this in the show. Remember, folks, I play the character Todd Packer. I'm not Todd Packer. The number of love bumps on my ding dong is zero. All right, gang. Who wants to right. tag in first one? Anybody? How many kids does Meredith have? Don't be looking it up. Three? 
Two. Two. Mm-hmm. She does? I never pictured yeah. her having kids. Yeah. I mean, uh, what was the second one? Uh, was it uh, where does where does uh, where does uh, Rain Wilson's uh, stash hit the chandelier? Is that question number two? Was yep. it? It's in the city of Berlin. Okay, zero for zero, okay. gang. Uh, what was the next one? What was the uh, first episode it, I was, was in? The, was the title of the first episode that the, you were the in? Todd Packer's in. Is what is it? Pac Man. It's usually a, a multiple choice question. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sexual harassment. Oh, yes. Here's another thing. I knew that. I tell this story uh, at the show. At NBC, I was told a couple years later, at NBC, they have sensitivity training for all new employees. Yeah. Obviously, you had to cover sexual harassment for sensitivity training. I've been told they air the clip from that show with Todd Packer to cover sexual harassment. <laughs> so at NBC, one could say I am the face of sexual harassment. Thank you very <laughs> much. Amazing. Thank you. It's amazing. It's a comp- compliment. All right. How many bumps? How many on love Todd bumps does Todd Packer have on his ding dong? Three. Got a couple love bumps on my ding dong. That's a couple or couple. two. We'll give it two. Two. Last uh, one. You, sta- you, you stumped the staff. You just saved me $12 on a right? burrito. Really? Thank you. 12, today we're going to share one burrito? No, the winner got a burrito. Lunch, there's, I there's said. There's no winners here. There's only there's, losers. There's just losers. How's yeah. it feel? I have a truck. We go. We go with a truck. <laughs> is that is that is that too too expensive or too too cheap for a burrito, sir? There's there's no twelve dollar burrito here. It's because 15, uh, because we're in Santa Monica. Yeah. We're in Santa Monica. No, no we're Beverly, in uh, Beverly Hills. Beverly Beverly Wood. I'd call this right. Yeah, Castle Heights. Castle Heights sounds dirty. Yeah, yeah. There's no twelve dollar burrito in the neighborhood. I think if you go to a food truck, you might get close. You might get close to twelve dollars. As in Lee dying. Yeah. yeah. As I lay down, we're gonna we're gonna read that. We're gonna put clips out. Yep. I'm gonna check in with you. Clips. In the meantime, people are gonna come see you live. Yep. Next this weekend. Or this weekend, one? the show won't be on yet. Okay. St. Louis Funny Bone on July 12th and 13th. Gonna be a banger. Birmingham, Alabama, July 26th through 28th. That won't be hot. It's gonna be no. no. Won't be humid. Rochester, New York, to cool it off on August 2nd. You've been and there. 3rd. I love that club. Oh yeah. Mark Cin- up there. Cincinnati, uh, August 8th, August 9th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. Lexington, Missouri. Really? It says MI. Is that Missouri? No, that's Mississippi. Oh, Michigan. Michigan. Or Mississippi. Yeah. Oh, Michigan. I don't know what I'm doing up there. I'm doing several different things up there. Okay. Yeah, I'm throwing out a first pitch somewhere. What day is that? Uh, August 23rd. 23rd. Okay. So I think we might be doing a, a trivia show one night, and then the next night I throw out the first pitch on my birthday. Have you done that before? Yes. How'd you do? Fine. Was it a strike? No. It gets across the plate. Across the plate. Yeah. That's all you got to yeah. do. Someone told Jay Moore said, don't try to be funny. Yeah. And he's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't try to be funny. It's just no. going to look stupid. Yep. Yeah. Just get it over. Stanford, Connecticut, September 6th and 7th. Des Moines, Iowa in September. Bay Salt, Colorado in September. Wheeling, West Virginia in September. Buffalo in September. Jesus, September, you're gone. Yep. David Koechner, K-O-E-C-H-N-E-R.com for tickets. My friend. It a is pleasure. always a pleasure. Always grateful to see you. You're the best. Yep, we are. We and are now on camera, I blow you. <laughs> but that's never been done. It'll take about an hour and a half. And after an hour and a half, blow you. you know what? Let's just call it. Let's just call it. <laughs> I throw a white flag. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 thank you. You're just rubbing your jaw. <laughs> I'm just tired. Oh, God. It's been great because it really tightens up the skin. I'm very happy. My daughter's face in the opposite direction. <laughs> Occasionally looking backward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is Grapefruit Simmons and Dave Cheshner. <laughs> As I lay dying. God bless.